Dogs, man's best friend, whether they are big or small, fat or skinny, or tall or short, we wouldn't be the same without them. Dogs can be fun to play with a lot of the time, but do you realise how remarkable these animals really are? Well, if the answer is no, then sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the episode as you are in for a right treat. In this series, I will be looking at how dogs help people and how much of the difference they really make to people's lives. Organisations such as Guide Dogs, Dogs with Disabled and many more will be focused on throughout the series. So, enough of that doggy business and let's look at the UK's largest dog organisation. Guide Dogs for the Blind is an organisation that provides mobility and freedom to the blind and partially sighted people. They also campaign for the rights of people with visual impairment, educate the public about eye care and fund eye disease research. In order for the organisation to help the blind and partially sighted people, their friendly team train the dogs who would act as guides for them, right from day one up until they are a full grown dog. Recently, Guide Dogs created more than 820 new Guide Dog partnerships in 2013 and figures are continuing to rise with the help of their committed volunteers. The organisation first started in 1931 by two amazing British pioneers, Muriel Cook and Rosamund Bond. These remarkable women organised the training of the first four British Guide Dogs from a humble lockup garage in Wallasey, Merseyside. During the First World War, a doctor looking after war wounded in Germany was called away from a blind man with whom he was walking in the grounds of a hospital. The doctor left his German shepherd with the man and was subsequently so impressed by the dog's behaviour that he decided to start experiments in training dogs to act as guides for the blind. So enough about the history of the organisation and let's take a look at the Labrador breed. Labradors are the most popular breed at guide dogs, they are intelligent and can learn quickly, and lastly, they are friendly dogs and can socialise well. I went to visit a brood bitch holder from Guide Dogs for the Blind in order to find out a little bit more information about her important job role within the organisation. I'm a brood bitch holder, um, which entails me looking after Hattie. Um, who belongs to the guide dogs but she comes to live with us as a family pet she goes back into guide dogs to be mated um, once she's been mated she'll come back to us um, and have her puppies at home um, which is called whelping the guide dog terms for, for that um, she'll have her puppies with us and we'll rear them for six weeks so had to feed them for the first two weeks and then they'll go on to solid food um, twice a day um, now they're on for three times a day by the time they're four weeks old they'll go on to have solid food four times a day now let's look at another important job role at guide dogs for the blind Meet Liz, a guide dog puppy walker who plays a vital role in the early socialisation and education stages of guide dogs. The aim of puppy walking is to produce a puppy that is socially well behaved, friendly and responsive to the handler's calls and commands. Did you know there are 3,500 volunteer puppy walkers across the UK? I'm Liz Hudson mm. and I'm a puppy walker for the Guide Dogs for the Blind Association. I've um, had my first puppy since April and I anticipate that she'll be with me till she's 14 months, uh, which is next year. So at that point she'll be assessed to see if she's got the right temperament and um, behaviour traits to go on to be formally trained to be a guiding dog. She's seven months old now and she was one of 12 um, puppies born in a litter and unfortunately one of the little puppies died quite shortly after birth. So there's um, 11 surviving 
puppies. She actually featured on the ITV documentary, Me and My Guide Dogs, and they're going to follow these puppies through their first year and then formal training and then hopefully being placed with a, a person in need of a guide dog. Who let the dogs out? A guide dog is trained to guide its owner in everyday situations. The organisation introduced the dogs to obstacles gradually whilst using a special lead for the dogs to wear. They also teach them to navigate their way around these obstacles. It can take a while to master, but when the dogs get it right, the trainer gives them lots of encouragement and maybe a little treat. All trainee guide dogs are also introduced to dealing with curbs. It's a popular misconception that a guide dog will know to cross the road by waiting for the green light. On the standard curb to curb crossing known to the owner, the guide dog is trained to stop at the edge to indicate if it has reached the crossing. The owner will listen for traffic, then, when they decide it's safe, they give the command forward. However, the guide dog's training teaches them not to obey the command if a car is coming. I'm the local um, coordinator and fundraising for Daventry Group. I've done this for about 10 years. I um, started off as a board for guide dogs where I look after the dogs while they're waiting to be rehomed or on holiday, etc. And now I've, I coordinate all the volunteer within Daventry. So we've got a, a broad spectrum of people that volunteer for us. And I just get everybody together. Um, monthly and we organise events within Daventry and raise as much money as possible for Guide Dogs for the Blind. Every hour another person in the UK goes blind which means they need to train more Guide Dog puppies. When you next visit the Guide Dogs for the Blind website, sponsor a puppy from just £1 a week or buy a single car donation at £104 and the organisation will send you regular updates so you can follow your puppy's journey to becoming a life-changing companion for a blind and partially sighted person.